we are at the Zero Knowledge Summit 7. It's crazy and awesome to be here and to see all of you. Uh, I do want to... I don't know, I kind of almost want you to give an applaud to yourselves for making it here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, Zero Knowledge Summit 7. Uh, I don't know how many of you were at earlier versions, but just to give you a bit of a backstory, we did four in person, and then COVID hit, and then we did two online. Last year, we took a hiatus because, honestly, online events are okay, but in person is so much better. And I just wanted to wait till we had this chance to actually meet again in person. The ZK Summit is brought to you by the Zero Knowledge Podcast. That's maybe where you know me from. Uh, it's been running for a while. If you don't know about it, check it out. There's lots of great content there. And I actually want to use this moment to tell you a little bit about the podcast. So if you don't know about it, it started in 2017. In 2018, it became a weekly show. Uh, releasing every week was very daunting. We managed to, and for three years, I didn't miss a single week, which was cool, but hard. And now, <laughs> thanks. But yeah, but, but more recently, I kind of have allowed for a few missed episodes, so you may have noticed, because honestly, taking a break once in a while, I think is okay. Okay, March 2018, we hosted the first ZK Summit. And I am wondering if anyone here knows of an earlier zero-knowledge-focused event that happened, because I think, I think it might have been the first. So, I think that's kind of cool. In uh, May 2020, my original co-host, Frederick, started to sort of phase out of the show. I started to bring in new guest co-hosts like Tarun and James and Josh, sometimes Georgios. And in February 2021, we added new team members. So, it's not just me now. There's a producer, Henrik, who's at the back doing live stream. He's also the editor. Uh, there's now a community person, Chris. There's Agnieszka, who's helped with events. So, the team has grown. So. Yeah, and then in October 2021, we even launched this new thing, which is ZK Hack. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a second. That's how many episodes of the Zero Knowledge podcast exist. Most of them are good. <laughs> I was told once, like, you have to have bad ones to know when you've done a good one. But mostly very, very good. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you check it out. These are the top episodes. So there are some great zero-knowledge-focused episodes, and there's also some really recent ones who've kind of like come into the top, what is it, seven. So for example, Sri Ram's episode only came out, I think, a few weeks ago, and it's, it's done very well. And he's actually going to be speaking later today. If you want to find out more or keep up to date, there's the Twitter, but there's also a link tree with all of the channels. There you can find like the job. We actually have a job board focused on ZK Tech jobs, we have a community board, there's lots of ways to engage, there's a very active Telegram group, and you can find it all there. So I want to tell you about ZK Hack. I know we're, I'm giving you lots of backstory here, but we are waiting for people to arrive. Um, ZK Hack is this event, so this was the first one, it went from October 26th to December 7th, that's super long, it was seven weeks, and in between each week there was a puzzle hacking competition. It was an experiment, it was incredibly cool, and it's kind of becoming its own hub in its own right. And for this event, we're actually going to be using the Discord for ZK Hack. That's the place. So the podcast is quite general. The podcast is like, when I'm interested in something, it's, it's decentralized web, it'll be zero knowledge tech, it'll be cryptography, but it's quite broad. ZK Hack, on the other hand, is very, very focused on zero knowledge tech, zero knowledge learning. That's like all we talk about there. And so if you're not in that Discord, you should definitely join it. I'm going to add the QR code in a second. Oh yeah, now I'm going to show my NFTs because that is the world we live in. So <laughs> I, last summer uh, I had a few days off and I started to draw these little cards. So this is like a deck of cards. They're, I mean, color in, draw, whatever. It's like, they look like that. So there's 52 cards with two jokers. They are live. Some of them are for sale. I, they're very new. People who have bought, there was like an art version of it. Anyone who bought any of those actually got an equivalent of these. So if you have one of those original ones, you also have one of these. And my thoughts with this is they're not ZK NFTs. They're regular NFTs. But we, I want to use these to do ZK experiments with NFTs. So having them maybe allows, I don't know, access to some sort of private voting or something like that. Um, there's also these other NFTs that we created for the ZK hack. 
Any owners of these will also be included in those kinds of experiments, so you might also want to check those out. Yeah, okay. You're not here for my NFTs and my podcast. You're here for the Zero Knowledge Summit 7. We are at uh, Hermitage, Amsterdam. Amazing venue. There's actually three museums here, and there's like a courtyard in the center. It's a park. Uh, it's been, I don't know, it's been really exciting to do a new event and to do an in-person event also not in my city. So uh, it's been challenging, but a lot of fun. A little bit of practical info for you. This is the Wi-Fi and password. You do actually find these signs around, but they're tiny. It's from the venue itself. So I don't know if you want to just take a quick picture. Uh, this is how you get online here. Cool. This is the QR code for the ZK Hack Discord. I don't know if that would work for anyone, but if you want to try it, this gets you into the general ZK Hack Discord. If you'll see there's a ZK Summit channel. That's the place where if you want to, I don't know, if you're thinking of something cool you just saw, if you want to get the slides, if you want to meet somebody, that would be a cool place to post. And do check it out. Like, check out the whole thing. Over on that Discord, we also, you know, we have a daily deep dive from Omer, who's talking about like new ZK tech. We have study clubs, like there's a Thaler book study club that's actually starting again really soon. We plan on doing more of those, so this is a great place if you're getting into the space. Yeah. Okay, so we are on the second, third floor. On this floor, there are three stages. You're on the main stage. There's a side stage, which is actually all the way at the end, so walk all the way down the hall. And then there's a breakout room. Main stage and side stage are filmed. If you don't want to be filmed, just be aware that there's cameras everywhere. And uh, so don't stand in front of them. And this stage is live streamed, I think. Yeah, OK. Uh, OK, <laughs> downstairs we have the restaurant, as you saw, and that's where the sponsors are as well. For the breakout session, by the way, what those are, they're not filmed. They're 10 to, 12, 10 to 20 people. The idea there is very much like a conversation, a brainstorm, like working out stuff. So if you go to those, just be ready to kind of like participate. OK, the program. So this is tiny. I don't know if you can actually see it. But we do have posters hung around. And the entire program is on zksummit.com if you want to check it out and figure out what you want to see. This is the afternoon. We have a lot of content. There, it's going to be amazing. Like, uh, I want to say a big thank you to the team that put this together. This is a bigger event than I used to do. Like, it used to be 100 people, 150 people. And now this is a much bigger uh, enterprise, and there's been a lot of people helping Agnieszka, and Henrik, and Chris, and Tanya, and anyone else I'm missing have been just phenomenal on putting this thing together. So I want to say a big thank you. Yeah. I want to say thank you to the platinum sponsors, Alio, Anoma, and Mina. You're going to actually hearing, you're going to be hearing from them shortly. They're going to do a short five-minute presentations each. I want to say a big thank you to the gold sponsors, Aztec, Manta, Polygon, Risk Zero, Scroll, and ZK Sync. The silver sponsors, Ethereum Foundation, Entropy, Geometry, Panther, Sismo, Threshold, and the Zero Knowledge Validator, which is actually my company, but anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, also, bronze sponsors, Axelar, Chorus One, Espresso, Ethereal Ventures, Hashcloak, Spruce, Web, and Zero X Park. I want to say thank you to the, the speaker dinner sponsor who sponsored yesterday's dinner, Bain Capital Crypto. Thank you so much for putting that together with us. I want to say thank you also to the break sponsor, Geometry. We're going to be announcing that at the break. And drink sponsor, Mina, who's sponsoring the drinks at the end of the day. So I don't know how many people did the application form who are here right now, but there was it's this, this event actually started with an application form. Oh, yeah, one, one side note before I jump into our question is the Zero Knowledge Summit is I, it's a little different from some of the other um, events that even I do in that all of the speakers, all of the talks actually came through proposals from the community. So this was not like me going out and actually picking who's going to be speaking, but rather incoming, and then we actually had a small committee who looked at it and put it together into a program. I really like that format, um, so just to give you a sense for it. But going back to the application form, we, I asked a question, so every time I do this, I ask a question, how would you describe something to a friend? The first one was like, how would you describe zero knowledge? 
CK Snarks. And then for this one, I chose one. I don't even know if I can answer the, that this question. This is a very, very hard one. But we did get some answers, and I'm going to share a couple of them now. So how would you describe polynomial commitments to a friend? It's a hash of a polynomial that you can do basic arith arithmetic checks, arithmetic checks on. I'm kind of curious how people feel about these answers, too. Um, another answer is if they don't know what commitments are, I would start with the concept of a game of remote rock, paper, scissors. So this is an interesting one. I give you a lockbox, but instead of having a single keyhole, the box consists of 20 keyholes. I can give you a key for one of the keyholes, and it'll unlock and present a small piece of information. But in order for the entire box to unlock, you need all the keys. So you can't actually access all the information in the box. And each of the keys are also independent. Alice can send a commitment to Bob, which binds her to a future message without revealing it, so Alice can prove she knew the message at a later point of time. in time. A polynomial commitment scheme allows Bob to do arithmetic checks on them in addition. And here's where I, we start to get a little lost. <laughs> An analogy between interpolation and those poles with a slit at the end that you swing around to get a moving picture of the environment, just kidding would lead them through chapters 1 through 4, 7, and then 10 through 13 of Proofs, Arguments, and Zero Knowledge, which is a book some of you may be familiar with. Um, <laughs> I wish I had those kinds of friends. Actually, you are in luck, my friend. Your fr new friends are to be had here who may be able to have that conversation with you. A polynomial commitment is a cryptographic device by which a prover can say that this is the polynomial I will be using without having to re reveal the polynomial. Later, the prover can convince anyone that they did indeed use the correct polynomial. Thoughts? Opinions? I would ask them to talk to Guillermo. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> I would say, let's order another glass of wine first. Later on, we can do that. Not yet. It's... What is it? 9.45. Okay. All right. So yeah, just uh, to wrap that up, to keep in touch, Twitter, Linktree, all the links. Very cool. And that's the intro to the Zero Knowledge Summit. I now want to introduce our three platinum sponsors. They're each going to say five words. Uh, five words. <laughs> five minutes. Sorry. They're each going to speak for five minutes. Um, first up, I want to introduce Alex from Alio. Tell us a little bit about, yeah, Alio. Yeah. Hey. Uh, hey, everybody, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm actually probably only going to say a few words about Alio and take only two minutes because you're going to hear from Pratush uh, here in a second who's going to talk a little more about it. But I'm just going to take these two minutes to say uh, thank you to Anna for letting us sponsor this amazing event. And uh, it's especially incredible for me because I actually helped out with the last ZK Summit all online. So some of you who participated in that one might remember me. I was running the side stage. Um, and I also help Anna out with the ZK Study Club, which is um, another kind of series of events that, that I've really enjoyed. And so this is special for me because it's, it's getting a chance to meet uh, a lot of you in person who I've interacted with in various ways virtually. And it's also exciting for me because, you know, I've, Anna kind of did a good history of the arc of how these events have developed. And just looking at the sponsor page pages should tell you how far this space has come in just the last four years. I mean, ZK Summit won, I mean, how many sponsors were there? One sponsor, right? So like, that's probably about how many ZK companies there were, right? Zcash, ECC or something, right? Um, but no, it's, it's, it's incredible to be on this journey together with all of you and be part of a technology that I think is really going to, uh, going to change the world. And it's fantastic to see uh, all of you in the audience here doing amazing work. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, all of that work that you're doing. And again, that's why Alio, um, which you're going to hear about more from Pratyush, but we're proud to sponsor this event. Thank you very much. Very cool. Next up, we have Evan from Mina. Oh, I'll get the slide that... There you go. Cool. Thank you, Anna. Uh, so I'm Evan. I am the CEO of the MENA Foundation and a co-founder of MENA Protocol. It's great to be here today. Um, like people have said, um, four years ago, this, this would not have been possible. And it's amazing to see the growth in the space and all that's happened since to make an event like this possible. And thank you, Anna, so much for putting it on. Um, it doesn't happen easily, we know. And thank you to you and the organizers for making it happen. Um, I guess I just want to briefly say um, some things on MENA and ZK in general. Like, 
I, I feel like this is just a very important time for zero knowledge proofs. It's like a moment when it's maybe moving from something that's niche to something that is more broad, and that's like a very special moment to be a part of, as well as I think a huge opportunity for what we can bring to crypto with privacy. And I think in particular, when you think about Web3, um, that plus privacy plus the security of zero knowledge, it can both unlock so many new applications as well as, I mean, at least I hope, um, bring something that allows crypto to build something that is actually competitive to Web2 in a way that is, is meaningful. Um, something I'm very excited about. So. Uh, very looking forward to it. Briefly on Mina, so we're a protocol building a cryptocurrency that's kind of inside of a zero knowledge proof, so it's easy to verify and also makes it easy to program zero knowledge with just TypeScript, something we're very excited about to get like this broader zero knowledge thing happening. We have a, um, a program where people can learn how to program um, zero knowledge proofs with just TypeScript using Mina. So if you're curious about that, I encourage you to check it out. We have already done a first cohort that was successful and we want to do a bunch more so that we can like, really make it easy for a lot of people to program with zero knowledge proofs and, and spread the word on it. Um, we'll also have a grant program coming out soon after that, so it's a good opportunity to learn how to program with zero knowledge and TypeScript with Mina so you can then get grants and stuff. And yeah, I mean, we're also hiring, obviously. Check out QR code if you're curious. If you want to work on like the core cryptography and support of like what goes into Mina's cryptography and like ecosystem, that's a good place to check out. Um, so thanks for listening to me for a few minutes. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm really excited for the event. And thanks again, Anna. Cool. All right. And I want to invite Chris to the stage to share a little bit about Anoma. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. It is great to see people in person. In the past two years, we've had zero knowledge conferences, like in the sense that you only had knowledge that someone was, you know, operating under this Discord handle and like posted solutions to the CK cat puzzle, and they clearly knew what they were doing, but you had like only that knowledge. I don't like zero knowledge conferences. I like maximum knowledge conferences. I was even thinking about, you know, it feels kind of ridiculous to have like public sponsorships for zero. Shouldn't we have like zero knowledge sponsorships? How does a gnome a zero knowledge sponsor something? But then also sponsors are like, what do sponsors get? They get like knowledge. So it's a bit odd. I don't know if we need zero knowledge sponsorships either, but it would be interesting. Um, Anoma is a zero knowledge project, uh, both in the sense that we use zero knowledge and that we sometimes have, it seems like a sufficiently vague definition that no one has any idea what we do. So this is like meta zero knowledge, but some specific parts of that that we're working on uh, are uh, different layers. So we're working on, uh, in part, a layer one for human coordination, which I realize is like a product definition, not a zero knowledge definition, but that includes a circuit for generalized private bartering. It includes a proof system, kind of a variant of plunk up. It in includes an intermediate language vampire, which uh, Joshua from Anoma will be giving a talk about later today. And all of these layers, we would really like to standardize because we are lazy. And if there are a bunch of people working on the same thing or who can like kind of agree on something or can agree on a modular part of something, like an intermediate representation uh, such as FAMPR, um, then all the better because the protocols don't really compete with each other and it's hard to get this stuff right. So uh, particularly we were working already with CK Garage on our implementation of Plonk and I know there are like 15 implementations of Plonk that I know about and there are probably 15 that I don't know about and there are probably 15 more that nobody knows about because there's zero knowledge implementations of Plonk. But uh, it's like zero knowledge in the other sense, right? Um, so if there's like some possibility of slightly reducing the complexity graph of slightly different implementations of hopefully in essence the same thing or something that could be modularized, we would always be happy to do this and happy to like work and set up sort of neutral governance bodies uh, wherever those opportunities arise. So if you're interested in that, please come find me. Um, otherwise, I just want to say thank you to everyone who organized this event, all the other sponsors, and all of you. <laughs>